In our last video on finding your voice, we talked about figuring out who you are and what your influences can bring to you. But oftentimes knowing what you hate, and particularly the trends you hate in music and want to rebel against, can be just as inspiring. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you find your voice as a musician by considering what you don't like in music. Hi, I'm Jesse Cannon and this is Museformation. This week I want to talk about how your not-to-do list is just as important as your to-do list. Director David Fincher, who's made some of my favorite movies like Fight Club, Gone Girl, and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, has said it's much more important to know what he doesn't want to do as opposed to what he does want to do. Knowing what you never want to do can be less restricting, allowing you to be open to finding new inspirations and in what you want to do, especially when you're starting off finding your musical voice. This allows the heart to do what it wants emotionally. I've done this list for my productions and keep it in a Google Doc to revisit from time to time. Here's some of my don't do rules for record production so you can get an idea what this list looks like. Don't make decisions out of expediency. Trace the root of the problem and give it consideration. Too much bass or treble is unacceptable. A balance needs to occur. Words should be pronounced so a listener without a lyric sheet can understand every word, even in the fastest punk song sung with the worst Boston accent. <laughs> No vocal should stick out as being more tuned than others. There should be consistency to the pitch intonation throughout a song. Bass should not be an afterthought. It should always be what expands or retracts the emotion of the song while working off the vocal as much as possible. Bass that's not optimized or gets buried in a mix is a lost opportunity. Every song should have one tone that's distinct to that song, so when a listener hears it, they feel like that's the only time they've heard that tone. Having both a to-do list and a not-to-do list is a common practice for many musicians, even if they keep them private. Coldplay exposed their list on an episode of 60 Minutes, where they showed off a list they had on their practice room wall. Then we have all our rules here. We've got our rules, so you can't have more than 42 minutes. These are just things we have to remind ourselves of all the time. The rules are important. See, look at it. Look at rule number six. Not many interviews. That's a rule. <laughs> always, always keep mystery. Always keep mystery. I feel like I've shown you my underpants. <laughs> David Byrne said the Talking Heads made restrictions on what they would do, like not imitating black singers. Not out of racism, though. He found it inauthentic since he's a white art school kid. No light shows and no saying "Oh baby" or other rock cliches. One of the Ramones' rules was no guitar solos, which was ironically broken on their biggest hit, I Want to Be Sedated. This also teaches a great lesson, which is that you can always reconsider these rules later if you evolve, but they're important to have in the moment as you feel passionate about what you never want to do. One of the traits of a great artist is to notice when you don't like a trend and develop a rebellion against it. If I had my way, I'd never put a ballad on a punk record. If there were ballads I wanted to release, I'd do a record of only ballads. I love records that have a single mood across the whole record. Not what Robert Smith of the Cure likes to call roller coaster records. The inclusion of ballads amongst more happy sounding songs takes me out of the mood of a record, which bothers me. On my own records, I rebel against this by keeping a consistent emotion throughout the record. As long as it's authentic and not done out of opportunism, it often leads to some of the best art in the world. Figure out what you don't want to do artistically and let that guide you. That's it. Am I missing anything? Is there any way you would have done this? I need to know your questions and what no one else is telling you, since I want to answer them, so leave them in the comments. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe and get notified for my future videos, since I'm going to be breaking down the concepts in this video, along with tons of others on promoting your music and how to make music you're more happy with. As well, I have a Facebook group that's linked below that is only helpful information. No one tried to sell you anything, playlist or con artists, only helpful information for musicians looking to be better themselves. If you want to learn more about me, make a record with me, or check out any of my books, podcasts, or anything else I do, head to jessecannon.com or at jessecannon on any of the socials. Thanks for watching. One last thing, if you liked this video, there's two playlists here with tons more videos that you'll probably enjoy. One's about how you promote your music and the other's about how you make songs you're happy with. Otherwise, you can hit the subscribe button here to see the rest of my videos. Thanks so much for watching.